What's up, everybody? It's Amadeo. In this week's episode, we discuss a little bit about what we've been up to over the last year. Enjoy. Be somebody podcast. Be somebody billions. <laughs> My name is Avadeo. My name's Enrique. <laughs> Why are you laughing at every <laughs> Just the <laughs> intro, man? Like the intro is always just like <laughs> we're like talking like super like casual and then just be somebody billions. Be somebody <laughs> My name's Amadeo. <laughs> Sounds all like professional. I'm just like <laughs> Be somebody podcast. Be somebody billions. Be somebody billions. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Oh, excuse me. So, starting off on this note, so last week we just published our first episode of the Or today. For the first, oh yeah, well today, but you know, last week, last week today. Yeah. And uh, right now, next week. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but anyway, we just published that. It's uh, good to be back. It's out now. Waves. The airwaves. Got our friends hitting us up. Oh my God, you guys are back. Back from the grave of procrastination. No, it's not procrastinating. We burst through the ground. We were just, we just got occupied with life. And now we're back. We got lost. The grave of life. <laughs> but now we're back. <laughs> but now we're back. We're doing things and we're trying to commit ourselves once again. Yeah. To this special. Operation. We are committing though. We need to stop talking about committing to it and actually just commit to it and not that, say that we're committing. Because the more that we do that, it's like a toxic relationship, you know, it's just like, oh my yeah, God. Like the more, you know, I'll be right on it, you know, we're going to change, we're going to do better. <laughs> it's not, we no never thing. change, <laughs> just empty promises. Damn, babe, shit. Damn. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So what I, what, I was, what, I, what I was just telling Amadeo is that a lot has happened since the last public episode. That was published. The last public episode was incorrectly published on YouTube in 2021 when that re- episode was recorded like a year before. Yeah. It was published. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about procrastination. I think we just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I think you and I just forgot to hit public on I YouTube. It was, I think it was live on Spotify and oh, okay. on Apple Music and the other podcasts. Yeah. Like the audio listening services mm-hmm. before yeah. they actually published the video on YouTube. Uh, we've been having like hiccups with YouTube. Yeah. And there's like out of order episodes that we're unable to fix it's because they're all unlisted because i send them to you so you can like look at it and approve it and then i think what happened is we hit public on one of them and then didn't hit public on the other one so then it, the order got mm. missed anyways so we're gonna take this time to do a catch-up and talk about where we've been because last time that i remember you had just graduated and I had one year left of grad school. That's it's the last that time we... That's ago? the last time, yeah. It's been that long. Yeah, yeah. So since then... <laughs> tell us what well, you've been up to, Amadeo. I'm, I'm an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the hoodie, huh? <laughs> I'm a man on the moon. But, wow. So it's truly been that long since we... Yeah. I was watching a few of our earlier episodes this morning, and like we were talking about like being 21. <laughs> Were we like really? No, we were. Like, like, how old are you? Like, oh, you're. Tw- I thought you were 22, but you're 21. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm 21. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so <laughs> what? It's so long to like to me to see that. Even I, look, I can like I look younger when I look back. I can yeah. see like the slight like supple skin. <laughs> and it it's looks, all downhill from here so on out. It looks so much nicer. Like, holy shit, what happened? Where's all my collagen? Yeah, this it's is gone. gone. It left. It was not my pores. And even then, like, people tell me I look young, but I look back on that. It's like, holy shit, they had a point there. Now now I just look in the mirror and I'm like, <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> oh, my God. Calm down. It's been like a year or two. <laughs> it's not that crazy. So, yeah, after graduating, graduated with a degree in marketing, a bachelor's of business administration with a concentration in marketing. And I've only used it for my own benefit. Nice. I haven't used it for anyone else's. Nice. I wanted to, and I might be making more money right now if I would have done that. 
but I wouldn't have been happy. Right. And I need to tell you that I was super disappointed in myself after graduating. Really? I, I don't think we ever talked about that. I just felt as though, why? Mm-hmm. Why did I spend all this time, all this money, all this stress, all this uh, just kind of like effort and energy over the last four years just for the end to feel as though it was taken away from me and anticlimactic. Yeah. Do you mean like in terms of graduating, like because of both, COVID or? Both COVID and also going out into the workforce in an oversaturated competitive environment. Perhaps I should have known that from the start. I kind of did, but I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. Being honest. And feeling like, well, I'm stuck in a time warp, in a loop. Because I'm having the same conversation with employers. The same exact exchange of words. And it's it was, uh, you know, we've looked over your portfolio. Everything is great. And we think you'd really fit in here. Uh, we're just looking for someone with more experience. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I just start crying. <laughs> but yeah. And I was like, okay, I understand. I feel that. You know, graduating in a pandemic, it's a new global catastrophe. Yeah. Everyone was scared, both on yeah. a personal and a professional level. It's like un- so massive business uncertainty. What are we going to do? Is our business going to be able to survive this? Can we do what we've been doing now that everything is. The, the, now that the circumstances have changed, can we afford to hire new people? Can we? I hope that that was my phone. <laughs> Damn! See uh, the table, the turns of t- uh, what is it? <laughs> the turns of table. The turns of table. Uh, but no, I had my ringer off. You know, right, ringer right, off right, right. Anyway, sure, sure. <laughs> but just feeling, just like, can we even afford to hire new people? Can we even like, yeah, like, no, we need people that know what they're doing. You know, we can't really be taking. A risk right now yeah and i understood that it didn't hurt any less right i understood yeah no that was we really graduated the worst time possible like no one was like everyone went home mm-hmm. for months and worked from home mm-hmm. we were like in there just graduated <laughs> like okay what do i do now yeah and like yeah don't go outside is basically what was being advertised you know yeah and I will have to say that, you know, I lost interest yeah. shortly after because I could have gotten a job. I could have kept going, mm-hmm. could have kept looking, could have kept fighting for it, and I could have settled. But that's what it felt like to me. Yeah. I'll settle, you know, and I'll have that job and I'll use my degree and I can start a career. But looking back on all of it, I didn't want to do any of that anyway. Yeah. And so my life has been kind of a series of odd jobs and... <laughs> freelance experiences yeah ever since graduating which i'm thankful for because it was pretty fun mm-hmm. and getting to learn a lot and kind of being on my own time sometimes when i was doing like my own thing yeah and then in terms of the odd jobs some were better than others but like <laughs> what's the specific like catch everyone up where you are right now and where like you came right now yeah when i graduated i didn't have a fashion label I now have a fashion label. Okay. When we'll talk about that. When I graduated, <laughs> I wasn't trying to pursue to be a visual artist. Now I am. Mm-hmm. When I graduated, I had barely tipped my big toe into acting. And now I'm trying to dive into the whole pool. And Yeah, all of a sudden it's exciting. Talk about it. Talk about your label. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Damn. <laughs> We got all the time in the world. Do we? Chill it here. I don't know if we have all the time in the world. We got at least an hour. <laughs> we have less than an hour right now. <laughs> but anyway, so in terms of like the fashion label, so as I touched on in the last last week's episode, when I was 15, I started a clothing brand. When that right. fell up, it fell apart because there wasn't just a lot of capital going in. We were all broke teenagers. Um, I still, you know, that never left me. I wanted to keep at it. And I was, I've been waiting for another kind of, form of that to happen again and in february of 2021 after looking through like several of the, um, there was like this one specific book of architecture that my dad had that just had this strong focus on color color in architecture 
and the book was split up into like black, white, red, yellow, gray, iridescent, whatever, just by section and specific color. And just seeing all of that and the composition and just like the effect of like the, you know, all of that. Yeah. Just had a profound effect on me. And I wanted to kind of go at it on my own. Like, how can I try that? I don't know if you remember this, because this was uh, several months before I had ever started that. But I sent you an idea for a t-shirt. Yeah, I, I was literally about to that bring that like, up. You pitched was, me your whole label before. That was like a small living room, like a luxury yeah, living room. Yeah, I remember chill, that. Kind of like closed off, uh-huh. a little weird. And that at the time was named uh, Interior. Mm-hmm. Interior. And that name never took off. But the idea... You know, the it's basically the, the same. Yeah, there. it was a seed. And now we're just... I've been taking it just yeah. like... You know, I've been wondering I should look through my messages and find it. I have like the oh, you have it? it's on my, it's on the computer. Oh damn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so but that. but what what made you like? Because I know you you've had all these years of experience as a design, you know, graphic design and all that. Specifically, want to one start a design company, two, one specifically about architecture, and three, add like a clothing aspect to that. Mm-hmm. What made me want to do that? Yeah. Because uh, those are all very unique things. I'm a visual together. person. Yeah. I've always pursued graphic design. I'm not always pursued graphic design. But why architecture? Design, but when I started graphic design, my dad is an architect. Okay. And that's what I grew up around. And just seeing him work at that and build something from the ground up and draw it on, on paper and all the small details and the lines and like the geometry and just like how it all came to life. That was so inspiring to see and awesome to see growing up and that just like has just it's just a it's a piece of me yeah of my person <laughs> that's super cool yeah and so i kind of want to like continue that um mo- moving forward with my life you know kind of thinking about what what are the things that i can hold close to me yeah and keep with me as i live my life because that's the way i see it from my own uh that's the best way to live yeah you know being surrounded by what you whatever you love the most um yeah so using my graphic design um ability Mm -hmm. and that kind of uh appreciation for shape and architecture and just kind of like combining those disciplines and like making something new and interesting and um fun right especially fun and wanting to be (laughs) a fashion entrepreneur once again Mm -hmm. just bring that back in and so yeah just got that the label growing Mm -hmm. slowly because it all started that you originally started just daily or about two or three times a week just publishing like different designs right Mm -hmm. and then transition to the the whole art um clothing side Mm -hmm. do you want to talk about the clothing side of it (laughs) So it started with uh, the idea. Um, I, from when I started, I wanted to put it on a T-shirt. Yeah. But there is a limit, and I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not especially experienced in like printing techniques, and so I don't exactly know how I would be able to go about like a full color image. You know, there's I've heard of CMYK printing, and I've like asked around town, but nobody else seems to really know what I'm talking about, which maybe goes to speak about the kind of quality of the industry in our specific place location not going to go further on that <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say it would have been expensive costly well that's expensive imperfect and perhaps not worth my time yeah if i would have tried to get it printed onto a t-shirt and so i thought about it you know what can be cheaper and i can like use my the colors and like be a little more hands-on with it because i've always been very uh attracted to the idea of like something made by hand like carefully right um, with lots of attention and care Mm -hmm. and so i was like well let's paint it let's paint the design onto a t-shirt and the first (laughs) the first iterations were of course rough as they should be probably and then finally getting a greater understanding learning more about it and then getting the 
the technique down to a little bit of a T. You know, there's still got still got some ways to go, but that's yeah. kind of like the beauty and all of it. It's so much mm-hmm. nicer than it was when I first started. And I know how to put it onto the t-shirt without damaging the t-shirt yeah. or without damaging the design. Um, the hardest thing about it is color matching. You know, how can I get the color to kind of be at least similar to what it is when... Right, from the design? Yeah, from the design on screen. Yeah, so does that fall, like, within the, like, r- actual paint and, like, you mixing it? Yeah, or it's is such it- a pain in the ass, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's insane, man. I never even thought about it, like, that level of, like, what you do. So you literally bring out paint, a paintbrush... And literally recreate your yes, design uh, yes, by hand. I've got my palette. So, so you have like, I've got the paints. do you like print out or do you have it on a screen, the actual design that you're putting it on? So I've got it both printed and on the screen so I can kind of like compare the colors. Yeah. And see how I can match it as close as closely as possible. I'm a lot of the time I'm not there. I'm close, but I'm not there. Yeah. But I think that's. Do you, that's do you have any, uh, any painting experience before this? No. I don't. I mean, I took an art class when I was seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> and just like general nice. arts, arts and yeah, crafts yeah. throughout elementary school yeah. and middle school, whatever. Uh-huh. Um, but no, I'm not a painter. Wow. I want to be a painter. Yeah. You know, I would love to grab like a canvas and just, you know, paint it. Yeah. Paint a design. Like, like make it like five feet, five foot by five foot. Mm-hmm. Just have it dominate a room. Right, <laughs> dominate the room. <laughs> but but you do that with your with your a, with your brand right now. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. I can do that today. Yeah, but I'm not going to because I don't that's, have the canvas. Anyways, that's <laughs> super cool. So, because you went through different iterations of like even uh, distributors, you not distributors, vendors you use for like your specific T-shirts and the quality and whatnot. And I feel that's like right. now you're like very narrowing it down to your specific. I had to involve myself in specific circles of people that were doing the same thing as I as I'm doing and yeah. wanting the highest possible quality for their particular visions and you know starting conversations listening to them kind of talk about their experience and like how they have fallen how they have gotten up how they continue to keep going and try to learn from their mistakes when they first started so that I don't have to do that as I'm first starting yeah so that's nice it's good to have those circles and those groups and the support, especially, yeah. you know, people that are willing to be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not hiding trade secrets. Yeah. You know, they're not gatekeeping the industry. Yeah. They're allowing and, you to step in and do what you can do. And your most like recent like drop, because you've had about this is you're you're about to drop your third like big drop, right? It's a brand new collection that mm-hmm. is meant to attract a wider set of customer. Right. So. This uh, this new design direction. Well, to, uh, talk about how do you like? How does a collection come into being? Like, do you design every day and kind of start grouping pieces together that you think would suit well as a collection, or you have a general idea that you then generate designs from that vision? Sometimes for me, I could, I could be doing anything. I could be doing something that's not even related to what to the label and I just have a random idea for a design. Yeah. And then I suppose over time you collect those ideas, the best ones that you have and you group them. That becomes a collection. Right. And then when they all are ready to go at the same time, you drop it at the same time. Right. And there's the collection. But I don't sit down and think, okay, we need a collection. (laughs) To yourself, uh, we need a collection. (laughs) It's just like, if I force my creativity, it's going to stagnate. Right. It's not. It's going to fight me. Right. No, we're not doing that today. So I need to allow myself the space, the time, and the freedom to be able to conceptualize, create, and finalize these ideas in my head. Right. And I can't, they won't be there if I just, don't take care of myself if i don't distract myself or if i don't focus on like something different Mm -hmm. and if i work too hard at being creative like i said it's not gonna happen for me yeah it's always happened after like i don't know you take a hot shower or go for a run or you're like painting something different or for me if i'm like working on design then i have like a completely random idea and i want to chase after that one then yeah 
Yeah. I'll do it. So do you like work on a new design or general like designing every day? I'm starting to kind of shift because when I first started, like you mentioned, I was doing one design every day and that was taking its toll on me. Yeah. <laughs> it, was really, it was really tiring after a while and I felt like I didn't have the same quality of ideas and I thought, why does it have to be so crazy? And how about instead of uh, solely just dishing out art, why can't we build a brand at the same time? That gives me a break from just the art itself and allows me the chance to kind of like introduce quality over quantity. You know, the quantity can come from the content. The quality can come from uh, the art, which is the core of the right. content, the core right. of the brand. Yeah, the art and the clothing. So, um, and yeah, that's uh. Yeah. Well, t- talk about your so talk about your new. Since people are gonna be listening to this, talk about your new collection that's about to come out. So, this new collection, the designs themselves, they have a strong. Uh, it's like a youthful emphasis. Yeah. So it's just like it feels energetic. It feels as though. Uh, it doesn't it's not taking itself seriously it's fun graphics and they're colorful some are loud and as i mentioned to you a long time ago it's kind of like similar to what off-white and pyrex was doing or what pyrex was doing when it first started what off-white was doing when it first became off-white yeah um and and what i mean by that is just like kind of the the raw and the just like aggressive somewhat just like i'm here now right this is what i'm doing right check me out yeah that's what i mean that's kind of like what i saw from um what virgil was doing when he first like ran out the gate r.i.p the virgil r.i.p virgil and i'm excited yeah i'm excited to show everybody because it's um i'm using spray paint yeah so that's That's super cool that's another method because like i'm not going through anybody to print it out yet i think when um when i have the demand and when i have like the proper resources to go after like you know, have all of those uh, higher quality garments printed then i'll try to explore like a more like a printed look of yeah the spray paint but for now it's actual spray paint and it's non-toxic it's safe for fabric mm-hmm. and it's fun it's really, really, it's really fun. <laughs> that sounds fun, man. I'm excited yeah. to see it. You haven't showed me yet. Yeah, I've been, I've been talking about it for weeks now. Like, yeah. I've been, I've been kind of procrastinating as well because I thought I was going to have it out by this weekend um, as we speak. Um, but, you know, what's the rush? <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> Well, I think lastly, I, I don't think you even mentioned, but what's the name of your of your brand, dude? Let, let the people know. So Where can they find it? I'm going to link it. You know why? Because I kind of like that people can't pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, sh- so you should talk. I'll say, okay. it, I'll say it once and only once. You can rewind it as much as you want. <laughs> why? No, why is not that deep? It's called Liminalala. Okay. But what? what's the what's the Instagram handle? What's the website? Liminalala. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll link it. How do you spell it? It's in the description. L-I-M-I-N-A-L-A-L-A. <laughs> why that name? <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of a riff off of um, the word liminal. Mm-hmm. Like, have you heard the term liminal space? Like, have you seen yeah. liminal space, like, on Instagram or on yeah. like, images or, mm-hmm. like, on Reddit or whatever? And it's just, like, a picture of this ugly, empty, like, a gas station or, like, a long hallway. Yeah. And it's just, like, kind of creepy, like, unsettling. Like, why are we here? It's a little weird. Yeah, yeah. Am I supposed to be here? Are we trapped here? Like, you know, what is it? Yeah. So I wanted to take that concept mm-hmm. and beautify it. Stylize it. Make it a bit more uh, aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, less washed out colors, no like l- yellow rugs and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, keep in mind, that's kind of like the intentional. That's like the specific aesthetic for a liminal space. Yeah. Also, that's not the only kind of liminal space. Mm-hmm. But in terms of this, it was taken like the qualities of what makes a liminal space a liminal space. And that's uh, the mystery the emptiness, the uncertainty, kind of like the vague quality of the surroundings. Right. Why are we here? You know, it's, I want everything that I make to kind of pose those questions within your head. Mm-hmm. Why am I here? Where are we? Where are we going? Where do I have to go? 
like is that it are we safe here it's kind of pretty here <laughs> <laughs> and yeah yeah building, hey, what about the of, what about the lala the lala is the lala is just um, adding a little bit of fun kind of like uh mm-hmm. somewhat nonsense somewhat uh um uh, what's the word yeah like a uh, kind of just like an irony irony to it yeah. I'm just, it's just fun i'm having fun yeah. and i hope you have fun wearing it <laughs> <laughs> damn that's dope what a pitch <laughs> yeah i mean my personal favorite design is is the t-shirt i have like we'll show it on on the youtube video uh, but it was your i guess second dro- like big drop that i can remember the where it was like the, the the three t-shirts like the green one and then the the what is it the r- kind of reddish one and then the tan one like those three are so those are my favorite at right now hands down yeah hands down so like the the screen printed tees yeah mm-hmm. i've liked those the most yeah we'll link those we'll link those Get and I, you know you know why i like it the most because i really like the whole campaign that you did when you dropped those mm-hmm. like that whole photo series like the the just the theme the Everything about it was just so unique and. I appreciate that aesthetically pleasing. I've been trying to, been trying to work hard to like just like stand out. Yeah, because it's also no, just that a tough place to be. Out. But like, then again, the harder that I try to stand out, I feel like I'm gonna get kind of distracted, mm-hmm. and I should just let things kind of like naturally settle in. I, I think that was like a natural like progression of a of a like drop like mm-hmm. campaign. Like it wasn't for us. It was you know it was location we all know that we went yeah. to and just like made look use the location as a unique way to use and show off the clothing yeah because you know it's an ordinary staircase an ordinary like building but the way you used it in the design like made it stand out you know love you bro (laughs) (laughs) anyways all right so talk about acting man what's what's up with that you're a full born pursuing acting now i guess i guess so and i was uh paid for a performance the last performance I ever I did, um, I mean I started acting that first day that you invited me out. That was yeah, that was crazy. What was that? that was <laughs> like literally third. it was it was this crazy like film challenge, and we needed someone for this like small act speaking role, and basically what it entitled someone in a suit. And I know you had like a new suit you just got, and I was like I called you. I was like, hey man, can you come do this little short film real quick? You were like, yeah, sure. And I was like, can you bring your suit? And you're like, yeah. And then you showed up. We did it. And I didn't realize how much of an impact it had on you. Like, at first you were just like, yeah, I really liked it. I want to, like, try it again and do some more. But I feel like uh, my kind of journey working in film, I met a lot of people who are like, oh, this, I, yeah, I want to try acting. Like, call me and stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> but I mean, I, I, Never called them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've called you. I just mean, like, everyone's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super cool. Cause it's yeah, fun, yeah, like yeah. acting's fun, and like yeah, being in film, and all that's fun. I'm but just being dick. but then we did we did the next <laughs> short film, and then I gave you a part there, and then it just kind of kept going and progressing, and then that one paid role that you talked about, uh, yeah, like all of that just kind of happened, and then now we're like I we were just talking about a role that I have for you in mind that I think you should play that I'm writing, but yeah, talk about that. That's I mean, that's I've, insane. How has that progressed? I've already told you before. Like I thank you for. Like from the bottom of my heart, like the floor of my heart, for even giving me the opportunity in the first place. I think that was in like, was that March third? That was March twenty twenty. March third, twenty twenty. I don't know about March third. I know it was March twenty twenty. I think it was March third, twenty twenty. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I showed up in the suit. It wasn't a new suit, by the way, but I had it for a <laughs> while. Uh, I had it for a while, and then I showed up. I looked new in it. <laughs> 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 and i did my thing i was fucking terrified bro i was so scared i was so nervous i was like trying to like like i was reading the script in the back like kind of like by myself just sitting down like looking at it trying to memorize it like oh like how we do it like how does it sound like how, how would that be and um trying to focus as, as hard as possible on how to make it a natural interaction and i felt like while i did have an idea in my head of how it can of how it could happen uh the reality of sitting down in front of people you just met and yeah. being in front of a camera and it's like okay go yeah you know, action mm-hmm. do it where you're on camera everything that you're doing is being recorded 
and even though like we're doing this right now and i've gotten used to this when i was there and i saw that like huge guy, yeah it's like, just in it's my just, face yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah i could imagine because it's like all like so many people are relying on you and like there's like a whole queue you gotta go by and i'll never forget i'll never forget just like standing on the other side of that glass yeah. wall <laughs> in the darkness and I, my character was supposed to kind of come out the door and like introduce himself to the interviewees and that was like the specific scene and i wanted to like kind of improvise a little bit and be a little more like whatever and like i opened the door and i like tried to make a quip i forget what i said i said something like like yeah 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 like i don't I forget. No, yeah <laughs> I, I remember what I now I was like, like you just came out of a meeting right like, yeah, right right yeah, yeah. i was like uh I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that next week or something. I don't know what the fuck. I don't yeah, know what I said. Yeah. And then everybody started <laughs> laughing on the set. I was like, no. I remember I that. You, I remember bro, that. You were like, <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> it's because we weren't expecting that. It wasn't written that you were like coming out of the meeting. It was just that you enter the scene and you say your lines. I was like, yeah, yeah. send me the paper on that and we'll talk about it. Like, yeah. I forget, I forget what I said. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it was. And... Oh my god! And then everyone just started like cracking up, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Damn. And then moving on from there, kind of getting over, getting over myself. Yeah. You know, getting over the embarrassment. And why does there have to be any embarrassment? Yeah. So get over all of that. You know, leave the vanity at the door. Yeah. Do it. Do the damn thing. And get better get practice you know the more that you practice it the more fluid it will be the more like you'll actually be able to kind of like artistically express a sort of new perspective to the character that maybe the writer didn't have in mind that elevates the character i think that's like what the best actors do right Mm -hmm. they take the director's vision and the writer's vision and they respect that but it's more humanized and unique yeah and it's it's very much like a like a tug and pull because like it literally what you're describing is like you can't have a performance without the writer and you can't have a performance without the actor because you very much need you know the actor to bring out the make the words real because very much what you're talking about the the mental like psyching yourself out of oh i'm gonna make this performance as real as possible like me as a writer i'm writing and saying how do i make this sound real as possible you know mm. and it's basically like you're you're carrying the torch for me and you know making it real which is which is crazy to think it's it's very much like a i need you <laughs> type of type of relationship you know we need yeah. each other yeah but yeah damn that's that's yeah so what what so what has happened okay so you did that short film and then a few months <laughs> after you did another short that was the next short film you did with me yep that was you haven't done you didn't do anything else right and then after that uh, I don't know if I'd already been contracted for um, the TV part by the time we were filming our the third short film I was in. Oh right, the same right. production company. I think I think you were. I don't know actually. Did that happen afterward or before? Yeah, that happened after. I think you were just talking about it. That must have happened after. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because we filmed that one. In March of 2021. March is a good year, I guess. I have a good <laughs> month, I guess. <laughs> good time to be an actor in March. Yeah. And yeah, man, I'm just wanted to, I want to take it as far as possible. I want to move to the city. Yeah. To LA specifically. Well, th- talk about like your, your acting role within the TV show. So I was... Because uh, that was your first role that you've done without acting in like our little film nope. production group that nope. we usually do short films yep. together. Nope. Uh, the only friends... I had there were the friends that I made on set. Mm-hmm. You know, no one, I didn't know anyone coming into it. Yeah. And it was a minor role, but the minor role played a major part in a particular character's right. growth mm-hmm. or, you know, the shift in their perception by the audience. Uh, so that was a, it was a several months, you know, kind of back and forth and rehearsing and, trying to further understand like the director like what she wanted yeah and getting to know her better and how to work with her and how to work with everybody else and meeting these people that were just like so so uh energetic yeah and so invested in wanting to be an actor Mm -hmm. wanting to be you know the creator of this illusion of another life 
some of them in another life. Um, and I wanted to, just like every single day, I wanted more. I wanted all in on it. Yeah. All of it, as much as possible. Every experience that is able to be had, I want it. That includes like, you know, getting rejected. That includes being told no. Yeah. By a catch director. That includes ruining a take. Yeah. That includes making a take. That includes, I don't know, whatever whatever it could be in store, whatever is possible. I just want it. Because I want to see it. Yeah. It's just been like a reminder of being, I've told you this before, like being a kid, pretending with all of your heart. And it was so effortless. Yeah. You know, whatever you imagined, that was real to you. And now you can get paid for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, it's fun. It's just, it's just like pure fun. Like, it's just, yeah. No, that's super exciting, man. I'm, it's infatuating to hear you talk about it because it kind of like reignites my little flame that mm -hmm. puts me back in like what you're describing of like this idea of just wanting to get lost within the craft and just mm -hmm. do it and not even do it for the reason of, you know, progression and this sense of success, just doing it because you yeah. love it and yeah. it excites you and it's yeah. what makes you want to just be happy to be alive and just keep doing like it, the, you know? It's something like the reaction, like the interaction for me, like the conversation and uh, like the fantastic quality to it all. Yeah. Like seeing your co-star's face when you say something and it actually like hits and then like react to it or... I don't know, just like getting told, do it, just do whatever you want, go, go, and you do something crazy, and like works out. <laughs> yeah, you know the bold choice, mm -hmm. and the bold choice was the right choice. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, man. I'm excited to work with you for this next year film. I'm super excited. Dude, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just, excited. I'm just, yeah, like I said, I want to, I want to be as uh, as fluid as possible. You know, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. I want to get rid of all self-consciousness. I think that's what makes a challenging role, especially challenging when you think too hard about it and it becomes like too foreign to you and you feel uncomfortable in that. And I mean, that's only sp speaking from my limited experience. Yeah. But I just, it feels like a certain thing in there. Right. But it's a good exercise. In yeah. fact, maybe the best exercise to get rid of all self-consciousness. Right. And just fucking do it. <laughs> yeah what's uh what's uh, what's is there anything else that you have going on that you want to catch people up on uh saving money that's very important do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel that so in terms um, of, yeah taking care of yourself i need to get back to the not the not the gym i don't like the gym um but i need to get back to exercising yeah. and taking care of my body mm -hmm. um going on a new skincare routine yeah i've never been on a skincare routine um it's important before but I can just see my skin and it's not it's not the same quality as it used to be. <laughs> my body doesn't make them the way they used to. You know? <laughs> the skin no, that's important. I think it really is important. I, I don't think enough in terms of like male younger adults know how important like skincare is. Yeah. I think it's important. I want yeah. I want to. Yeah. I think just general taking care of your body this and your body. mental health, mine. everything. This is mine. This is my body. This is yeah. given to me. This is my temple. Take care of. I it. was blessed with this body, so let's <laughs> let's take care of it. That's the yeah. least. That's the least I can do. It's like my responsibility mm -hmm. to take care of it. So on that note, be somebody skincare routine is now dropping on um, be somebody plus. <laughs> be somebody plus. So with the subscription, you guys get that extra box. Um, we're also getting shaving cream. Shaving cream. Shaving cream. Is yeah, coming it's coming out. Too. Um. We just got a car. <laughs> <laughs> All electric. <laughs> it runs that on water. Be, that'd be fucking dope. Damn. Damn. All right, bro. What? How about you? Um, I feel like to make it quick. Why do you have to make it quick? Because I think we're running out of time. I don't know what. T I don't know what. We've what time? About, uh, about ten minutes. Okay, <laughs> make it quick then. Um. Yeah, I mean, last time I was on my floor at my parents' house, living with them, because it's pandemic, and damn, it's crazy thing. So much has happened. I moved in with uh, my like longtime uh, collaborator in film, my cinematographer, as well as an actor that I now have worked with a lot. We all lived, we all lived together in an apartment, 
and we were all just kind of in the same mentality of pursuing like the entertainment industry whether it was like production like writing acting and whatnot and we were all just trying to make it in this like pandemic world <laughs> you know mm-hmm. i was again saving money is important i was working like two jobs uh i was working at lululemon of all places and at a uh brewery like serving alcohol and like cleaning cups and stuff and and still finishing grad school yeah that was all happening at the same time and then i just got a call one day that someone had recommended me for a position on a film set and it was like the like the like the what i what i mean like the bare bottom i mean like the absolute bare bottom of the barrel that you could start with in the film industry mm-hmm. which was a covid production assistant so specifically <laughs> What my job was, what it started as was making sure everyone on the film set tested when they needed the test and that everyone was wearing masks and that things were being sanitized. Yep. And I did that for like a week and then I got moved up to like the key, which in in film, whenever you say key, means like you're the head of that kind of like department or group. Yep. Um, So I was the key. So I was more in charge of making sure that there was like the shifts were done well and like everyone was constantly like on set and that making sure facilitating that all the testing was done right and basically it was my i mean i could talk about it now i mean it's it's on my imdb page so it was a the film was called actually i don't know if i should talk about it no i'll talk about it. it's okay i just don't know if i'm gonna say something bad about it because it, it was rough don't get me wrong yeah, it was keep rough the specific details out of it you know just don't yeah anyways, as long as we're not it, name dropping. I, I was just I was about to name drop right now. So don't name drop. I, I was I was like super working hard on it just because it was like this big company that like I like looked up to and I was like, whoa, like I can't believe I'm working on this film set with like these people. Yeah. And so I was just like overworking myself and like really committing. And yeah, basically that finished up. That was a great experience. Realized, you know, oh like I I was talking to we we just did a documentary about a week ago and one of the questions that we were asked uh, by the director of the documentary, it was basically like, what do you define success to be? And like, I, I, my answer was that as we progress through life, I think my answer changes. Like before it was, you know, getting to college, you know, getting to graduating, getting, making a short film. Like it changes every time as, as I go, you know? And back then it was getting on one film set and, you know, just being able to do that. Like that was like, to me, I was like on top of the world. Like, wow, like I can tell people I worked on a film set. Like that was like crazy to me. I was like head over heels about that. And again, it just, it just keeps like, you know, as you reach your goals, it, your goals just keep getting bigger and bigger. Yep. And that ended, I went back to working at, uh, Lululemon and as we say, no name dropping. I mean, I don't know. I love Lululemon. It was a great time. Lululemon. <laughs> Shout out to Lululemon. <laughs> Luxury athletic retailer. <laughs> anyways um and leisure wear uh yeah no they were great um i worked there then i kept working at the brewery and kept working on my on grad school and then i got a call from a friend of ours that's that's also pursuing to be an actress and she was on this like big film set and so i was called to do a, a, the next kind of up position from that which is like being a normal set pa so a normal set production assistant and kind of your responsibility is there change of just being, just being a helping hand on set, making sure everything's running well, yeah. and that's kind of the more bare bone way of explaining it. I guess there's, it's more complicated than that, but that's the bare kind of responsibility. So mm-hmm. then I moved up to that role, and that one was like crazy because that one I was like on actual like professional, like when people say like film lots, you know, like Universal Studios and stuff. Like I was in a studio for that, like. Mm. like the red light was like flashing outside you know <laughs> you know you see like on the movies it's like the red light like rolling like i was like in there you know? stop recording in progress <laughs> like to get into the building i needed to talk to the security guard and he like my name was on the list and like the gates opened up like it was yeah. crazy i was like whoa again um anyways the craziest story and this just goes to show how like life really is just insane but I was I was tasked to go grab a director a coffee and I went to go get the, the coffee and right then I ran into one of like the producers from that first film mm-hmm. and he was come to find out just visiting a friend on set for like five minutes and I ran into him and he told me he was like oh Enrique and I was like oh hey hey man and basically long story short he was saying hey I remember you from that film how much you worked how hard you worked you know what are you doing like what are you doing after this like 
I'd love to like, give you an opportunity in whatever you want to pursue. And I was like, whoa, like totally thrown off and obviously gave him my info and whatnot. And he basically got me on his next film, which was, you know, I feel like I should just talk about it because like I just felt like <laughs> like to date, that's the best film I've ever been on. And it was like a dream come true because it was a A24 film, which like is one of whoa. my favorite production companies <laughs> that, that makes films. I don't know if you. I would just keep it safe, just not. Oh, I mean, I'd say it, I was say it was A twenty four. I'm not gonna say what film it was. Yeah, yeah, because it's not out yet. But yeah. anyways, yeah, it was like super <laughs> insane to think about that. I was now working on, and then I, when when I got offered that is when I then quit uh, my other two jobs, which was working at the bar and at Lululemon. Mm -hmm. And so I was like all in. I was like, all right, this is it. <laughs> There's nothing else. This is it. Yeah. So then I worked on that film for another four or five months. And that film like really like was like boot like boot camp 101 like <laughs> throw film school out of the window like this is like how you learn to be on a film set so i like learned everything about being on a film from like pre-production which is like organizing everything and then to the pr production side and then like wrapping it out um it was crazy though like i that in, in that film i was responsible one of my like key responsibilities was to go to set every day in the end of the day and pick up the axes. It was shot on film, not digital. Mm -hmm. So there was actual film stock. Mm -hmm. And my responsibility was to pick up the film and take it to the uh, office where it was getting it picked up and then get shipped to LA. So I was responsible going at the end of every day and grabbing what was shot, millions of dollars right there in my hand. Oh my God. And get it to get shipped out. Anyways, that was amazing. That was super cool. That it showed me. And that, and on that That's film, I was terrifying. Bro. Oh, it was terrifying. It was oh, so terrifying. No. But, anyways. I'm just trying to fly by it. So that I was an office P, which is basically a production assistant, but in the office. So, mm -hmm. and and I was also a runner, so I was going to set a lot to like take stuff and like do a lot of stuff. Basically, again, just helping hand on the office side of of a film set, yeah. which a lot of people I think don't know that there's a whole office side to one film production where they kind of make sure everything's running well and keep tally of everything and and a yep. bunch of more stuff. But anyways, yep. after that film, then. Then right after that film, I went back to kind of like finishing my classes and I worked on like as, as a day player, which is called when you go and help out for a day or two on a lot of other big sets. And again, I was just super cool getting a bunch of experience and kind of opening my eyes to really the film industry. And yeah, I, I don't think I can talk about those, but those were actually really cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those were like insane to be there and like seeing yeah just seeing it happen um but since then i'm not gonna go those are kind of the most memorable kind of how i started but since then i've worked on like four or five other films now just different positions kind of going up the the, the ladder and getting more experience and seeing other things yeah a lot of that i can't talk about but it's just been super insane going and then obviously then i graduated from grad school finally um but yeah, it's just been insane to really be in the film industry and going from, you know, a dream of, oh, I want to be in the films to like being in the films, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, especially right now, because usually it takes about a year or two for films to like turn over and actually come out. Yeah. So right now I'm in the time period where a lot of those films that, that we're talking about, which happened like a year or two years ago, are now it's barely coming world. out. So they're like okay. barely coming out now. And it's mm -hmm. cool to see like your work and like, oh, I was on that. Yeah. Um, you're, like but, wait, you're like waiting after the movie, you're watching the credits roll. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but, oh, and then something else that I did, I, I interned, and this is like all only possible because of the pandemic, which is like really crazy to think because I was talking to one of my friends saying how the pandemic for us in the film, industry, for me specifically, really gave us a like, platform to jump into it because there's there was basically a lot of extra help to f like film sets need because of the pandemic yeah so they hired a lot of like new people locally and whatnot but i was able because of the pandemic and a lot of offices closing working virtual i was able to like intern for this uh, production company that i really like look up to in la so i was able to get that experience while i was working on the film set like i was doing that at the same time and it was just like insane to like get that side of the kind of film world where it's more about reading scripts and like packaging and like pitching and making seeing that like the very bare bone pre-development of a film production but anyways long story short 
I'm at the point now where it's happened for like the past two kind of films where I work on a pro- professional film set, then I take time off and then I work on my one personal film production. Mm-hmm. And then I just did, I just finished up another like film production about three weeks ago. So right now, as, as I was telling Abdel, I'm working to try to, you know, do another personal film. Cause I, I definitely don't want to get lost in the industry. Cause I think it's very easy now that I've been in it for a while to see yourself get lost in it where it's not necessarily a bad thing where you know you start working back to back films just super busy but i really want to take the time to stay focused and keep writing keep working on my own personal work and you know build up my career in production as like a producer and also you know keep working on my craft and keep developing myself as a writer and director yeah um so that's kind of where i'm at right now um but other than that i mean there's always like a bunch of little other things kind of working on Mm. like you and i are working on something right now Mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean i don't know i I think now it's just yeah it's just exciting we're in exciting times this this year is gonna be fun yeah Yeah. we're gonna make it fun yeah but trying to move in the summer yeah (laughs) but yeah (laughs) that's that's basically where i'm at now and yeah that's that's a quick catch-up on both of us just catch-up possible yeah i was a little bit more verbose than yours but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay yeah no we're doing things and so yeah more information in the coming weeks yeah and updates and gotta make a greater effort to remember what happens to me on a daily basis so we can talk <laughs> about it <laughs> i think next episode we'll probably have uh, our first reintroduction of a guest episode that's right yeah that's right so it's gonna be exciting but yeah i think that's a good little way to wrap up the episode agreed yeah Cool. Well, Once again, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Podcast. My name is Amadeo. My name is Enrique. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Yeah, take care. Till next time.